So, hi guys. I've decided to create a little video to answer some uh, questions I had put to me on Facebook and to clarify some points that I've made. Uh, I've been trying to record these videos, as you know, without a script so they come over as more sort of natural. But obviously this means that they lack some details that some people obviously might want to know. But I am trying my best to get as much detail in as I possibly can. So I just want to run through the titles for my upcoming videos. As I said, I've got quite a few videos planned. So, so far I've got 13 topics, which are medication, weight gain, invaliding pension and war pension, the benefit system, help for heroes and other service charities, assistance dogs, specifically canine partners. Anyone who knows me knows that I have a canine partner called Judy, who I'm going to introduce you to. The NHS versus the MOD in terms of the treatment and the handover to the NHS when I actually left the uh, MOD. Day to day life including using a wheelchair. The injection treatments that I've had. I want to talk about pain management programs that I've undertook. Then just talk a little bit about sort of future treatment options including the opportunity of having a spinal cord stimulator fitted, which is my next course of action, which I'm really excited about and looking forward to talking to you about. And then finally, mental health and joining Civvy Street. So a question was asked on Facebook about my weight gain. And I'll discuss in a later video, uh, but a combination basically of going from being incredibly active, uh, physically active in, in the service, the go to days when I can't even get out of bed sometimes, two or three days in a row, I don't even manage to get out of bed because I'm unable to stand. To life in a wheelchair, which can be very sedatory. To some of the medications that I take, which cause weight gain, especially one called Pregabalin, which anyone who takes it knows is nicknamed Pregobalin. Yes, I have ballooned a bit since I left service. I probably put on around three stone and this is not something that I'm particularly proud of but I am making an effort to try and do something about it and I am actually currently applying for a grant from Help for Heroes for a recumbent bike and I'd love to go to the Warrior Games next year and represent the UK in some kind of recumbent bike um, activity. I stated in my initial video that I don't want to discuss the nature of my job or where I was deployed for my own safety and because of the official secrets act to which I am still bound. I also don't actually feel that it adds much of anything to my story because I was not wounded, I was injured. I have never and would never claim to have been wounded. There is a huge distinction between the two. I am an injured British disabled veteran. Finally, the term war pensioner or war veteran is a phrase that's used by Veterans UK for anyone who was wounded, injured or sick before 2004 which was caused by or aggravated by military service. Now I agree that this can sound a little misleading but this is the terminology that they use. On discharge, after reviewing all of my extensive medical records my injuries were deemed to have been caused initially by basic training and then primar primarily, as I described, by jumping off the back of a truck while I was carrying a lot of weight. The following years of day-to-day -day service life, which even for a desk warrior like me, is more strenuous than your average CV job, compounded the issue and slowly made it worse. Now, after discharge, the MOD accepted full liability for my condition, which is why I receive a 60% warm pension with mobility supplement and a substantial invaliding pension, all of which I will discuss in later videos. Now, I've only just begun to tell my story, and I hope that you'll stick with me as I work my way through it. Thank you.